Hey guys, two years ago I made a video how to use Axios in uh, Vue.ux, uh, which is the state manager for Vue.js application. And that was one of my most uh, famous videos and most viewed videos until this moment. And today I want to do the same stuff, but a little bit updated. Uh, today is 2020. When I say a little bit updated, I want to uh, clarify that that's not the only way uh, how you can use Axios. And there is a many, many different ways that you can use Axios uh, with the Vuex. Okay. But I just show you a very simple example because I love to start with a simple example and then uh, when your application grooves a lot, you can uh, you can apply a different kind of techniques, but we don't need to complicate something that is not complicated in the beginning. Okay, uh, the idea here is going to be very simple. We're going to use the modules uh, which uh, view, Vuex is uh, offering us. So like this, our code is going to be more modular and it's going to be easy to maintain and testing purposes as well. And very quickly, you see what's the idea behind the modules, using the modules. And obviously, the main idea is that do not put all your logic in one single index file in your store. Okay, so let's go on to start with very simple example. Again, we're going to use Axios. We're just going to fetch some data, some posts from a JSON placeholder um, API, which is a, it's a web, which is API for testing purposes. And uh, and I show you how to how to do this. Let's go to create first of all a simple Vue.js application, and we're going to do this by using a Vue CLI. Now, I hope so that you have installed it already in your system, but if you don't have installed it, you just can go in Vue CLI website, and there is a very nice and easy documentation how to install in your system. In my case, I have already installed it in my system. So what we do is the uh, I'm going to open the terminal and I'm navigate uh, into the directory that I plan to create the, the application. You can navigate in the directory that you choose to use it. Okay, and here we say we say view create uh, view x app for example. Okay, and we just press enter. The name. Uh, doesn't really matter. You can put any name that you prefer. That's just for testing, but for for the purpose of the video, just to show you how these all work together. Okay. Uh, here you can choose the default, but I'm choosing the manual because, like this, we can install uh, Vuex directly. When you press Enter, and as you can see here, we have a Vuex. Uh, press Space to select it. Okay. I'm unselecting the linter because we I don't need the linter just now. Uh, once when we select the Vuex, it's going to create for us. Uh, it's going to install Vuex, then it's going to uh, it's going to put a folder for us, uh, which is going to be under the source uh, source folder, and it's going to be um, a store folder. But we you see uh, how all this working together. Uh, just press Enter mm, and then Enter again. And uh, we don't want to use this uh, configuration for future projects, so you just press Enter. And it's going to create for us uh, everything. Next step, we just have to CD on the directories that it's going to create for us. And then we're going to install, for the simple way, we're going to install Axios. Okay. If you use uh, frameworks like, for example, Nuxt, uh, they have the community uh, module for Axios. So you can use it because it's quite helpful, actually. It's very easy for, for use. But in this case, like I said, I prefer to make a very simple example. So we just install it with npm uh, Yarn. It doesn't matter if you don't use Yarn, you can use npm in this case. OK, so what we do is that we just cd in our directory and we say Yarn at Axios. Again, if you don't use a Yarn, uh, you can type npm install Axios. OK, that's done. And I'm going to open my project with uh, Visual Studio. In your case, if you use some kind of different uh, code editor, you can open it from there. It's up to you, okay? So as you can see here, we have the structure under the source file. We have the assets uh, folder, the components folder, and here we have uh, the store folder, okay? Well, actually, we most of the time, we're going to work under the store folder, okay? 
and uh, that's our index, which means that here is absolutely all, uh, all, all the storage that we have for the moment. Uh, but we say again that we're going to uh, make it modular. Okay, we're going to use the modules here. Uh, means that under the store, what I prefer to do always is uh, just create a uh, folder, which is called in my case modules. Okay, and in the modules, let's go to create the first module, which it's going to be used to fetch from there uh, the posts from the API. Okay, so obviously we can oh not obviously big i prefer well i prefer i'm going to call the uh, the module posts okay okay post js and here uh, we're going to create our first module so that's uh, the stuff that we don't going to need it because we're going to put under the modules okay so we copy this one we go here and we say uh, we say const and that's going to be the name of our module. We just create the object here. And here we pass uh, the state, the mutation, and the action for the moment which we're going to use it. And to make it more maintainable, uh, we're going to specify that we want the, the, well, the namespace it to, be, uh, to be true. And then uh, further in, in the video, I'm going to show you what I mean by that and why we do actually this. Well, it actually, it's very easy to understand. Imagine that we have an action uh, that has gone to this patch and it's uh, it's going to call, let's go to say, load post. Okay. But then we have another module that is called, uh, I don't know, test module. And then we have another action uh, that is again load post. Okay. So if we specificate that we want the namespacing to be true, in our case, uh, when we go to dispatch the action, uh, we go to dispatch with the post slash and then the name of the action. Okay, so like this is going to be a little bit, the logic is going to be a zipper. Uh, we don't get confusing there and we don't get errors from, uh, from Vuex. But like I said, uh, let's go to continue with the video and you see uh, what's the idea behind this, okay? Now, uh, obviously, in our posts, we need uh, okay, the posts. That's going to be for the moment just empty array, okay. And as I well, you see that we install Axios, so let's go to import the Axios. We import Axios from Axios, okay and let's go to use it actually under the action we're going to create our action which is it's going to be uh, load posts and we need the commit so we can commit the mutation from here okay and then let's go to create our action with uh, our load post action uh, using axios so what we do here is the uh, first of all, we get from the API, and then we say, then, and well, then we're going to transform our uh, data. Uh, we're going to commit our data to our state. Okay, well, to our mutation, and the mutation is going to uh, change our state. If you remember the the workflow here is that the action we dispatch the action, the action is going to uh, commit to our uh, mutation and the mutation is going to transfer it's going to change uh, our state okay uh, probably we need the catch as well uh, okay well probably not we need the catch because we need to display if we get some error from the from the server okay and in our case like I said we use uh, a JSON placeholder API and we're going to fetch a hundred of the posts uh, that they offer it us. There we go. And here we say the response. We're going to create an arrow function and we say the um, let's go actually we committed to uh, something we don't create already uh, the mutation, but let's say that it's going to go set set posts and what we want to commit there is uh, 
the response dot data okay and that's which uh, what's coming from uh, from the api okay and here we can say the error which we can just console log the error uh, error okay so that's going to create our mutation here what we do is the uh, we need the state okay we need the state and then uh, we need the data which is coming from here okay once when we get this what we can do is that we can change our state uh, like very easy and simple we say state post it's equal to our data okay and something that i miss to do this is exporting with the default option okay we're going to export our posts okay that's uh, our module we can save here and then we don't need all this and under modules we say that we're going to use uh, the post module as you can see that is quite helpful and it's easy to maintain means that uh, when our application is getting bigger we're just going to import more uh, more modules obviously we need to import our uh, post module from we say that that's the modules and that's a post okay okay so so far what we do is that we just import our module uh, we use the, our module here in the main index uh, file okay uh, our store index file and then uh, from here as you can see that once when we dispatch now you see how we do this but once when we dispatch the low post action that's going to commit the data which is coming from the api to our mutation which we call it set post and our mutation is going to change our state okay that's going to create the main uh, the main stuff which happening in different well, super component uh, that's that's going to use actually that one and we say for example posts list okay uh, we have to create obviously we have to create this component we not going to pass everything to our component uh, with the extension view and if you have the extension in the visual studio install it you just can type view and press enter and it's going to create a basic structure of UJS structure uh, for you. Let's go to say post list, uh, which is going to be a div. And here we say uh, another div uh, where we want to grab all the posts which are coming from uh, which are coming from our API. Okay. Let's go actually to create this one, and then we continue down there. Uh, to fetch all this data okay so we say v4 and that's going to be post in posts okay obviously we need the key here okay so uh, the key is going to be dot uh, well we have the id so that's going to be the key and we just need to fetch that's going to make it in h1 for example uh, we need uh, the title means the post title okay perfect let's go on to grab the information let's go on to grab the posts from uh, from our module okay first of all to grab this one what we do is that we have to import uh, map state from uh, from Vuex okay a map state that's going to uh, map the state okay simple enough so map state from view x obviously view x have to be like that and to use the map state we going to use the computer property here computed 
and we're going to use the object literal map state and here say a namespaces posts namespaces post means that that's the the module okay and now uh, we specificate uh, which value we want to take from our uh, from our module and in our case it's going to be posts okay the namespace is going to specificate the name of our uh, module and then uh, the value is going to be the boss okay if you understand what's happening here okay obviously uh, we cannot grab absolutely nothing now because we don't have information inside so what we have to do is that we have to dispatch this so how we dispatch this uh, we create when the components is create okay uh, we want to say this dot dollar sign sorry uh, dollar sign store dispatch and then what was the name of uh, there we go low posts but remember that because we put the name spacing true so remember that we say posts and then slash uh, low post as i say that imagine that here we want in the creating of the component we want to dispatch uh, actions from different modules so here we can use the namespacing and as you can see that's quite clean and quite clear everything okay what we can do now is that let's save everything and let's go to test that everything is working correctly and if not it's going to uh, show us the error or if we missed something okay uh, something that i want to do and i prefer to do but you don't need to do it it's just i change the server for dev so i just prefer like this and i'm going to use the terminal which is coming for uh, by default with the visual uh, studio code if you don't use it you can use your uh, terminal by default okay so we say yarn and then we say dev we wait for a second that is going to build for us everything and once when that's done let's go to localhost 8080 and let's see what's happening here obviously it's nothing happening because we don't have the information let's see there we go we have the post titles okay guys so i hope so well the, my plan was to make it very easy very simple uh, it's a very simple than the video that i make like two years ago okay and like i said there is a thousand different ways that you can fetch uh the data in your vuex okay uh there that's one of the way and that's the simple way but try it and see that it's helpful for you okay Thanks a lot, guys, to watching this video. I know there was uh, I was quite a long time with that. I'm not making any video, but I was a little bit busy. But I'm back again, and I'm very, very appreciate for all of you that you subscribe for my channel. Thanks a lot, guys, and see you next video. Bye.